Hey everybody, it's Emily at Dark Schooling, and today I'm going to bring you my December book haul. I bought quite a few books in December, not a ridiculous amount, but you know, significant enough to warrant a separate book haul. So, these are the books that I acquired not at Christmas, just, you know, over the course of the month, and I thought it would be fun to show you, so let's get started. The first book I picked up is Writing on the Wall, Social Media, The First 2000 Years by Tom Standage, and I got this sort of with gr level 11 for Build Your Library in mind, but I don't know yet how I, if that's going to fit. I sometimes just buy books that sound cool and then they end up not fitting anywhere, but if possible I'd like to squeeze this in. It just sounds really interesting. It's sort of like the idea that there's always been social media in some form or another throughout history and it just sounded kind of fun and something that teenagers might enjoy but it is a little bit dense. It's like really small writing but I think it could be a quick read too. I'm not sure. Another book I picked up is The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. This is a middle grade I think and it's sort of billed as like a middle grade horror novel. So that's kind of, it intrigued me. I have no idea what this is. I don't know what a jumbie is. When I was at the Merrimack Valley Book Festival, I heard a couple of the authors mention this is a book they really liked, and I was curious. So I finally picked up a copy. And I also think it's interesting that it looks like the main characters, at least on the cover, are African American. So there's some diversity in here too. So win-win. This next book is kind of random. I honestly really just liked the cover and the title. I, I don't know if the story is any good. It's called Before We Go Extinct by Karen Rivers, and I think it has something to do with um, a boy's friend, maybe in a, I don't know if he was, there's an accident of some sort, and I don't know if he dies or is just severely injured. And there's something to do with evolution, and I don't know. Honestly, I picked this up because I thought the cover and the title were kind of cool. The next book I pre-ordered, it came in the mail yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day before, and I was really excited about it. I don't know when I'm going to have a chance to read it, but I'm super excited to have Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. Oh, I loved Scythe. I, I thought it was fantastic. I loved where it was going. I'm super excited to find out how the rest of the story progresses. I don't know if this is a duology or if there's going to be a trilogy or more books in the series. I have no idea. But I am just really excited to get to this. I love Neil Schusterman's writing. I love how he plays with crazy ideas and makes them completely plausible. I, I just think it's awesome and I'm very excited to read this. Another book I picked up sort of, I won't, I won't say I picked it up randomly, I've heard this book mentioned a lot, a lot, a lot on booktube and I've never read it and I've never read anything by this author and I feel like if you're in booktube you should at least read one of her books. So I picked up Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abertali. It's gonna be a movie I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to see the movie, but um, I want to at least read the book and I thought my daughter would like this too because she, she wants to read more this year and I thought she might want to read a booktube favorite. So yeah, I don't know. I've never, I don't really know a lot about this, honestly, I, th besides that it's got a um, openly gay protagonist, I believe. Or maybe he's not out. I don't know. I, I know there's a gay protagonist. <laughs> and so this would also fit the bill for um, one of my reading challenges for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge was to read a book with an LGBTQ plus main character. So, so maybe this will work out for that if I pick it up. Uh, this next book I picked up based on um, Katie at Life Between Words recommendation and honestly it's like the perfect book for my husband and I. I don't know if he'll read it or not, but I'm hoping maybe he will. So I picked up Mr. Dickens and His Carol by Samantha Silva. We are kind of obsessed, my husband more so, but he's gotten me into it, with the A Christmas Carol adaptations. He loves all of the adaptations. We Every Christmas we watch all of them, or as many of them as we can get to. I'm a more of a fan of the quirkier retellings. I love The Muppet Christmas Carol, and I love Scrooged. Those are like my two top favorites. He likes the more traditional ones, but I mean, they're all good. 
So we were really looking forward to going to see um, The Man Who Invented Christmas is I think the title of it. The, the movie that came out with Dan Stevens is Charles Dickens and all about how he created the story of A Christmas Carol, but we just, we never, we never got to the theater, it just never worked out. So we were kind of disappointed, but then I heard about this book and I was like, oh my god, it's just like the movie, but it's a book. So, so I picked this up and I don't know if I'm going to read it now, if I'm going to save it for next December, but I was just psyched to pick it up and have it and have a copy in our collection. This next book is another one I picked up because it sounded really intriguing, but I really don't know that much about it. And that's Sometimes We Tell the Truth by Kim Zarens. This is, I want to say young adult, and I want to say, based on what I, the little blurb that I read about it, it sounds like a retelling of Canterbury Tales. And I don't know how much of that it follows, or how much of it is just stylized after Canterbury Tales, where it's like a bunch of, a series of um, people telling stories, but it sounds interesting, and I really thought the cover was kind of fun, and I just, I don't know, sometimes I pick up books on a whim, and we'll see if they're good or not. <laughs> um, another channel that I'm a big fan of is the Restricted Section with Megan and Sue, and they were just talking about their favorite books of the year, of 2017, and they both really liked this series, but which is Lilith's Brood by Octavia E. Butler. I've only read one other book by Octavia E. Butler. I read, yeah, right behind me. I read Kindred, um, not last year, year before, I think. Maybe it was, I don't know if it was 2016. I think it was in 2016. I read Kindred, and I've been really wanting to read more of her work. So when they both said that they loved this series, I was insta buy. I, I was definitely going to read it because I really want to read more of her work. And the, the way they talked about this made it sound amazing. This is a trilogy bound in one copy, and so I don't really know a lot about it besides it's dystopian, and it takes place in um, a future world where aliens have come, I think. I don't know if I'm getting that right, but it sounds awesome, and I'm hoping to get to this this year. Right before I got sick and went to the hospital, I had been book shopping, and I had placed this book order, and I just thought it was kind of weirdly relevant. So <laughs> I was really looking forward to reading this book this year. I'm hoping to pick it up really soon, and that's Smoke It's In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. I've heard people raving about this book, about how great it is. It's basically a book about death. It's about how we in our culture view death, I think, and it's about the author, it's her memoir, when she worked as a mortician, I believe, in a crematory. And it sounds super morbid, but also really interesting, and I read Stiff by Mary Roach, like, many years ago, and I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And so I've been wanting to read something like that again ever since, and this might be the thing. So I'm hoping to pick this up really soon. But I just thought it was slightly, like, disturbing that I would pick up a book about death right before becoming so ill I had to go to the hospital. That's weird to me. I don't know. And it was funny, when I was looking at that book, you know how Amazon is like, well, if you like that, you might also like... So it showed me this book, which is The Butchering, the Butchering Art, Joseph Lister's Quest to Transform the Grizzly World of Victorian Medicine by Liz Lindsay Fitzharris. And this is exactly what that is. It's a biography about Joseph Lister and what, in his quest to come up with a better, more sanitary, more healthy way to perform surgery in the Victorian era. I don't know how much you guys know about Victorian medicine. I don't know a lot but I do know how gruesome it was. <laughs> there was no anesthesia. They, they didn't know how to like keep people from getting infections. So it was just so gross and dirty and horrible. Like your worst nightmare would be to have to have some kind of surgery and you lived in Victorian times. So this book sounds really morbid and interesting to me. I don't know. I'm hoping it's good. I was, it was one of those like, well, it sounds cool, so let me buy that book. I don't know. I'm hoping it's good. And of course, that led me to this book, 
called Quackery, A Brief History of the Worst Ways to Cure Everything. This just sounded so fun. Oh, and this is by Lydia King. I'm sorry, Lydia Kang, MD, and Nate Pedersen. I love stuff like this. This isn't like a sit down and read through, straight through kind of book. It's set up in like, there's pictures and you can kind of, it's, this is kind of bathroom reading, honestly. This is like the perfect book for that, to leave in the bathroom and, you know, just pick it up and read as you feel like it. You know, if you want to read some pretty gruesome, morbid stuff while you're in the bathroom. But I don't know. I think this sounds really cool. I was excited about it. So it'll be fun to have in the collection. And it's a beautiful book. It's gorgeous hardcover, no dust jacket. It's just really nice. I like it. Another book I was I picked up when I bought those um, is the sequel to Sapiens. I bought Sapiens by... Um, Yuval Noah Harari a couple of years ago, and I've only kind of skimmed over a little bit of it, but I've actually, my sons and I were reading it right now because I've just, I've been wanting to read it, and I thought, you know, if I'm going to read it, I might as well educate them too, so <laughs> we're reading it together. So we're all reading that together in the mornings at breakfast, and so I thought it'd be a good idea to pick up the sequel in case we want to get to that. So basically, Sapiens is the history of mankind, or humankind from like the very beginnings of human evolution to the present day. And this is a brief history of what humans might become in the future, which I find ex extremely intriguing. This is all sort of fascinating to me. I, I, I don't know. It, so yeah, it's basically like what happens next? Where do we go from here? And I think that sounds awesome and fascinating, and I really want to know, and I really want to get to this. So I'm hoping we can finish Sapiens in the next couple of months, and then we'll get to this. And the last book I want to show you is one my husband got me. Is sort of my, my father started this tradition when I was a child of whenever I got sick, he would bring me a present, and it became like a tradition to get a sicky present whenever I was ill. I had completely not even been thinking about that. And when I came home from the hospital, my husband had a package waiting for me, and it was this. It was 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. It's one of the only Joe Hill books I don't own. I think there's one more that I don't have. I don't think I own Heart Shaped Box. But I've been wanting to get a copy of this because I haven't read this. This is one of the only ones I haven't read. So I was really excited that he found a copy for me. And it's beautiful. I really like this copy. It's very pretty. So it'll look really nice on my bookshelves. So yeah, I was excited about that. It's Emily in the future. I was editing my video and realized I forgot a book. I forgot to talk about a book. So I wanted to add one more book to my haul that I just somehow misplaced after purchasing. It wasn't in my pile. Anyway, and that book is License to Quill by Jacopo della Quercia. I heard about this book. I don't know where I heard about it. I think I found it on accident, actually, scrolling through Amazon and um, maybe it was on Book Outlet. Anyway, I had to buy it. This book sounds ridiculous. This is sort of historical fiction spy thriller, but it's not really it's it's based on, I'm just going to tell you, this is about what if William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe were spies and they were trying to figure out the gunpowder plot. Are you intrigued? Because I'm intrigued. So, I don't know. I, I feel like this is kind of what I wanted Will to be, that TV show Will, that I just I can't do because it messes up. Shakespeare too much. <laughs> so I don't know. This is either going to be fantastic or horrible. I don't think there's an in-between. So I'm hoping for fantastic because it sounds amazing. It says on the back, License to Quill is Jacopo della Quercia's page-turning spy thriller starring William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe during history's real-life gunpowder plot. We always knew there was more to the story than met the eye between Shakespeare and Marlowe. Their rivalry is well known, but their careers in shadow. That's a hidden saga artfully woven into the background of their daily dramas, both on stage and off. 
When all the men and women in the world are merely players, Shakespeare and Marlowe must wield their license to quill. Like an iron pen navigating through the fascinating golden age of English espionage, the tumultuous Cold War gripping post-Reformation Europe, and the cloak and dagger politics of Elizabethan England, it's high time to reveal the mysterious origins of the Bard's most famous haunting play, Macbeth. I, I'm already in love with this book. <laughs> And I have yet to even read the first page. So I'm hoping that this is as good as it sounds like it's going to be. And also the cover is just fantastic. I love everything about this book. I'm hoping that it's good. So those are all the books I acquired in the month of December. That's 13 books that I bought in December or acquired. I didn't buy all of them. But yeah, that's a pretty hefty stack. So I'm actually tentatively, I don't really... I always say I'm not going to buy any more books. Yeah, no, I know I am going to buy more books, but I'm hoping to not buy as many books. I'm going to try to rein things in because at this point, I have a lot to read. <laughs> I have a lot to read, a lot, a lot to read between the family reading crates and working on level 11. That's a lot of books to read. And I also have a lot of stuff just that I in personally really want to get to. And so, yeah, I will never read these books, all of them. I, I just, I can't. So I'm, I'm hoping to, like, maybe rein myself in just a smidge, which I know is ridiculous because I'll never do it. But, you know, it might be nice to try to catch up on some of the stuff I already have before I buy more. So, anyway, that's just a silly little lofty goal I've made for myself for 2018. Buy less books. Not buy no books, just less. Woo! So, well, did you guys get anything new in the month of December? I'd love to know. Let me know down below in the comments and we can chat. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Happy reading! Bye!